Uh, we have had a phenomenal increase in testing. We've been able to use our laboratories. Uh, our emergency management team has done a very good job of reaching out to our state labs, getting them on track, getting them coordinated. Uh, our testing numbers are way up, as you'll see. Uh, next week, uh, by the end of this week, we think we're going to be up to about 7,000 tests per day, which is an exponential increase of what we have done. I made this suggestion to the Vice President. I made it to the President. Uh, I often tell you when um, I am uh, unhappy with the federal response to this state, the uh, fairness dictates that uh, kudos where kudos are due. And here, the Vice President and the President responded very quickly. Uh, so I want to thank them for that. Uh, every single thing, his administration, and it starts at the top, uh, including the Vice President, uh, has been consistent with uh, the expectation that we repatriate these passengers and we do it in a way that does justice to the spirit that defines the best of our country and the state of California. It goes without saying that the United States must work with scientists around the world to aggressively develop a vaccine for the corona, uh, coronavirus. Uh, the Trump administration has suggested, as some of you know, uh, that the vaccine might be too costly for some people to afford. How vulgar, obscene is that idea? That you're rich, you can get the vaccine, you're poor, you can't get the vaccine, you're going to die, you're going to live, so that the drug companies can make their outrageous profits not acceptable to the American people. When that vaccine is developed, and it must be developed as quickly as we can, working with folks all over the world. Obviously, it should be made free to every person in this country and, in fact, every person in the world. Over the past couple of days, President Trump has said that he would prefer if none of the passengers aboard these cruises landed on U.S. soil. Did he mention any of that to you? In your conversation. Yeah, we had, a, we had a private conversation, but he said we're going to do the right thing, and you have my support, uh, all of our support, uh, logistically and otherwise. Uh, not based on tweets that have no scientific basis, not based on politics, not based on policies designed to protect the wealthy and the powerful. So I, before he made those statements publicly, I had a private conversation with him around 4.30, uh, West Coast time, uh, and he said everything uh, that I could have hoped for. Uh, and we had a very long conversation, uh, and every single thing he said, they followed through on. So I'm, I'm just not interested in, in finding daylight uh, on those statements. At a time when half of the people in this country live paycheck to paycheck, and when people go to work every single day, even when they are sick, because they need an income to take care of their families. The United States remains the only major country on earth not to guarantee paid sick leave and paid family leave. Now that is absurd in a general sense, but it is particularly dangerous given the moment we are at right now. Right now. And that means that today there are people who are going to work who may well have symptoms of the coronavirus or other illnesses. And in the midst of this crisis, when we do not want people going to work who are sick, who may have the coronavirus, we must guarantee that all people who do not go to work or self-quarantine themselves because they think they may have the virus receive a paycheck to keep their families and their own lives going. Not a radical idea. If we were living in the system we want to live in, that I want to see, of course everybody would have paid medical leave. But we're not there. But in the midst of this crisis right now, I don't want anybody, because of lack of income, to have to go to work and perhaps infect others because they're afraid they're not going to receive an income to take care of their families.